Brace yourself. We're about to take a step inside a small D Democratic nightmare. That also happens to be a big D Democratic nightmare, a nightmare that actually happened at least once before in this country in the year 2000. Yes, I'm talking about the Florida election disaster that brought us the presidency of George W. Bush. This year, could it happen all over the country? Even if the polls don't shift much over the next two weeks, could Barack Obama end up losing the election by virtue of Republican efforts to prevent people from voting or from having their votes counted? In 2000, the most obvious problems and villains were in Florida. This year, we may be seeing the effect of the worst practices of voter suppression, especially the purging of voters from voter rolls, being national systematically spread into many, many other states. Think back to that Bush v. Gore nightmare and back to Catherine Harris, Florida's then Secretary of State. She's best known for stopping the recount. Less well remembered, however, is her removing 57,000 Florida voters from the rolls because their names, she thought, were similar to those of people convicted of crimes. So what did America learn from Florida 2000? About partisan officials running the election business instead of nice bipartisan county election boards? Well, not much or way too much, depending on how you look at it. The Katherine Harris effect has caught on across the country thanks to the law intended to reform the system after the Florida fiasco, the Help America Vote Act. Partisan secretaries of state, not county election boards, thanks to HAVA, are now in charge of maintaining lists of voters. So that means would-be Katherine Harris's around the country get their chance to put their personal spins on how our elections are conducted and who gets to vote. In some states, that means wholesale voter purges. Leading the nation is the state of Colorado, with purge numbers that some experts estimate have been as high as 19% of all voters. A new article in Rolling Stone says that the woman most responsible for starting Colorado's purge binge is Colorado's former Republican Secretary of State, Donetta Davidson. For all that hard work kicking people off the voter rolls in her state, she got a promotion, a big one. President Bush appointed her to a federal board formed to help fix Florida-style election shenanigans. She's now in charge of showing secretaries of state across the country just how to maintain their lists of registered voters. Fox, meet Henhouse. These troubling stories are detailed in that Rolling, Mug, Ma- Rolling Stone magazine article I just referenced. It's in this week's issue. It is called Block the Vote, and it is mandatory reading for all Rachel Maddow Show viewers. Here to try to talk me down, the co-author of that article, Robert Kennedy Jr. Bobby, thanks so much for being here. Thanks for having me, Rachel. Um, in the interest of perhaps maybe talking, to me, down, talking me down about this, um, do you think that this election um, could be stolen and could, can, at this point, can it be stopped? Well, as you pointed out, in, in Colorado, which is a swing state, a crucial swing state that could be won or lost by a couple of thousand votes, 20,000 voters, 19.4% of the vote, not 20,000, but 20, almost 20% of the vote was purged by the former Secretary of State. The New York Times disclosed last week that since then, an additional 37,000 have been purged and 6,400 new voters have been purged. So um, certainly those numbers are very significant. Those kind of numbers could affect an election. And what we see is that the purges disproportionately impact Democratic voters. The new voters are almost three to one Democratic in Colorado. So if you purge 6,400 new voters, you're getting rid of a substantial number of Democrats. And the algorithms that they use that are in what you call the Help America Vote Act which incidentally was passed by the Republican Congress and the Republican Senate and the Republican president. But um, it was designed by, there were some Democrats involved in the original writing, but it was really hijacked by Bob Ney, Congressman Bob Ney, who's now in prison, yeah. and Jack Abramoff, who's now in prison. And it was, um, it's been used to erect a series of barriers that make it really an obstacle course particularly for, um, for, for African Americans to vote, uh, for Hispanics to vote, for young people and old people. Um, one of the requirements is a, that is now spread through most of the states via HAVA is identification requirements. Hmm. Now, you may say, well, it's no problem. Every time I go to write a check, I show my ID. I show a government-issued ID, a driver's license. But in fact, there's a lot of Americans who don't have driver's license. One in 10 American of voter age do not have driver's license. Who are they? They're senior citizens, they're young people, they're people who live in cities, and they're black people. In other words, Democratic voters. One in five Democratic, one in five black voters does not have a driver's license. That means if you require the driver's license, 
you're getting rid of 20% of the black voters in this country. Um, there's other things that are now used also to purge mainly African-American voters. In the last election in 2004, according to the United States Election Commission, there were a million black voters whose votes were not counted. 2.7 million Americans altogether, mainly Democrats. But a lot of, them, a lot of these um, methods target African-American voters. Um, another method that is being used that's probably the most frightening is called the perfect match type match. And what that says uh, is that if your, uh, if your registration, the information on your registration, the government agencies, the electoral officials in each state are required to check your registration information against existing government databases, your social security database and your driver's license database. If any of the information in some states is a perfect match is required in swing states like Iowa and Florida, a perfect match is required. Perfect that match, mean, so that means like middle initial hyphens, means, everything. Exactly. Yeah. So if I wrote my name on my driver's license, Robert F. Kennedy, and I wrote on my registration to vote, Robert Francis Kennedy Jr., my, um, my registration would be thrown out. And that's what the new Secretary of State of Colorado has done to these 6,400 new voters who are, again, mainly democratic. It's one thing to understand what these tactics are, and when you lay it out that way, it's very easy to see why they have chosen these uh, uh, targeting new voters, tar these ID requirements, this perfect match stuff, because obviously this sort of selects for likely democratic voters to keep people away from the polls. It's one thing to know why it's happening and that it is happening. It's another well, thing know, to know how to stop One of the it. things that you've talked about a lot on this show is the Bradley effect. Yeah. And, you know, one of the, probably the better, the best explanation about the Bradley effect which is really the difference between the, the exit polls and the official tally. Yeah. That black voters, but really it's Democratic voters, receive less in the, in the official tally than they did in the exit poll. Hmm. But that's largely explained by the fact that after they vote, hundreds of thousands, in fact a million, black voters are simply not counted. Um, the spoilage in black jurisdictions and black precincts, and this is according to the U.S. Election Commission, are nine times the spoilage in white precincts. That means ballots that cannot be counted by the machines. Why not? Because the black precincts receive the worst machines, the oldest, most antiquated. So nine times the number of blacks votes are simply thrown out. There are more blacks are also given provisional ballots, and a third of the provisional ballots are thrown out. That's why it's important. If you get this book, uh, Steal Back Your Vote, which is stealbackyourvote.org, this will tell you how to avoid the kind of the obstacle course, how to run through the obstacle course so you can make sure that your vote counts. You need to know that they're setting it up for you, know why, and know how to get out of it. Don't accept a provisional ballot. That's the key thing. And vote early. It's absolutely critical that people go in and vote early. And if you can avoid it, don't send your vote in, but actually go in in person and vote early. The article this week in Rolling Stone is called Block the Vote. Steal Back Your Vote is a very cool comic that explains not only how this stuff works, but how you can avoid getting trapped like this. You can learn more about that at our website, rachel.msnbc.com. Robert Kennedy Jr., it's great to see you. Thanks for being here. Rachel, thanks for having me.